Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of the MATLAB and Simulink Robotics Arena. Uh, for today's episode, we're going to talk about using data to build mathematical models for uh, uh, for different components. And um, to join me today, I've got uh, Chris Fedorenko from the Engineering Development Group here at the MathWorks office in Nairik. Um, hello Chris and welcome to the Robotics Arena. How are you, how are you doing today? I'm doing well, how are you? Oh good, okay. So Chris, do you want to go ahead first and first, you know, not only introduce yourself, but also talk a little bit about the Engineering and development group you're at the MathWorks? Sure, sure. So that's a really cool program for people straight out of school, be okay. masters mm -hmm. or undergrad. Mm -hmm. uh, and what it does, it allows you to really get to know the product by solving customer uh, okay. cases. Okay. And you also get to experience different groups within the company. Okay. Um, so as, as part of the engineering development group, um, uh, when, when, whenever you call the MathWorks for a tech support request, you're talk, usually talking to people like Chris from the engineering development group. Without wasting any more time, let's just get into the video real quick. Mm -hmm. um, uh, so for today's agenda, Chris is going to do a little bit of motivation and background as to why we decided to do this video in the first place, uh, following which we'll do a quick software demonstration. Um, and. We're going to get into into the system identification app, and what the system identification app does is it helps you build, uh, you know, linear or non-linear models based on um, on on just data. Um, and then, you know, finally, we do some key takeaways and point you guys to some resources um, to do better at your competitions. So, you know, I'm just going to hand it over to Chris and let her take it away. Excellent. So a common scenario we see is that you got some new piece of cool hardware, you want to play around with it, explore it, you want to um, probably design a controller for it and test those controllers yep. out. Um, and a good way to do it is modeling. Mm -hmm. But we often see that um, getting started with modeling can be intimidating. Correct. So that's yeah. what we're going to do today yeah. to show you how to do it. Just to sort of add to what Chris, uh, what Chris was talking about, uh, the, the component that we're going to be modeling today, and again, we're using this only as an example, is um, is the Blue Robotics T200 um, uh, thruster, and this is this is a thruster that's that's commonly used in um, in maritime competitions. You know, you've got the um, you've got competitions like RoboSub and RoboBoat, uh, and and these these thrusters are, are, are pretty are, are pretty common in in those competitions. Um, and Blue Robotics was kind enough to to help us to help provide us with with a data set that we could use, um, and be grateful for that. Yeah, but, I'm looking forward to playing around with that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, but speaking about modeling in general, uh, you can kind of put all modeling types on the spectrum, mm -hmm. starting from very much uh, based on equations mm -hmm. modeling to data driven modeling. Um, ideally, you if you have a really simple system, you can just write out the equations and you know exactly what's going on. Yep. So that would be first principles yep. modeling. Um, but that doesn't happen that often because systems tend to be complex and you might Could not I, know yeah, yeah, the absolutely. details. Absolutely. So kind of in the middle lives uh, gray box modeling. Mm -hmm. You know the equations that describe your system, but you might not know all the parameters Correct, yeah. for it. And I, I mean, a, a, a pretty common example of gray box modeling is, you know, it, Think about you. Think about yourself trying to, you know, model the susp the suspension system of a car, and you know, you you know that a suspension system is basically, you know, you have a spring, a damper, and a mass, and uh, but you it's not it's it's not always that you know every coefficient in the in those in those differential equations, right. um, and uh, so gray box modeling and parameter estimation is is a good fit for that kind of, uh, of that kind yeah, of yeah yeah. So you just yep. collect some data and you figure out what the value is. Correct. Yep. 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 But what we're going to talk about today is black box modeling. You might not really have much idea of what kind of physics mm -hmm. is going on in your system, but you can collect the data and you can still have a model, Correct. and a pretty yep. good model out yep. of that. Okay. All right. So how does system identification work? Uh, as we mentioned, you need to start by collecting data. Mm -hmm. You want to excite your system with some kind of input mm -hmm. that hopefully covers uh, different behavioral characteristics of your system that are yep. typical for it, and you want to record what output results. Mm -hmm. uh, a second important component is choosing a model structure. Okay. Model structure is basically just something that describes the relationship Correct. between your input and output. And um, and you'd obviously be wanting to just just because you you don't have an idea of, of the math involved, right. you know, you want to try different kinds of model structures. Yes, okay. yes, and there's a wide range of choices for okay. you to play around with. Um, starting from simpler models like transfer function models mm -hmm. and state space models, and going to like nonlinear models, okay. If, okay. like you see a dead band yep. in your system or something like that. Yep. And a good rule of thumb here is you want to start as simple mm -hmm. as possible. Yep. You want your uh, model to be complex enough to describe what's going on, mm -hmm. but not 
any more complex than that. So yeah. just go yeah. stay simple and st and, and, then, and then walk in, up from yeah, that. Yeah, okay. if you need to. Okay. And basically that's all you need. After you have all of that, you just get model at the end. Okay. That's really just a black box. Cool. Okay. Yeah, let's, let, let's, I'm, I'm excited to see the, the software demonstration. All right, so let's get started with that. So say you have your data in a CSV file mm -hmm. like we do. Okay. We have two data sets here. Mm -hmm. One was input as a sign suite and one was input as a square suite. Okay. And is, is there any particular reason why you need two data sets? That's a great question. We need two data sets so that we can use one for actually creating the model and use the second one to um, see how well the model does, oh, okay. basically okay. for the validation. Okay. 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 And that allows us to see like if we're overfitting and gives us yeah. a better sense yeah. of how well our model okay. yeah. is performing. Um, so first of all, we need to um, import our data into uh, the workspace. So an easy way to do it in MATLAB is using an import tool. Okay. You can just double click on mm -hmm. your data and it should, uh, will let you do that. Yep. So you see we have um, uh, our time measurement, mm -hmm. uh, measuring input, and measuring force. And um, so, uh, you know, over here, for, over here for the input, you're measuring some sort of PWM signal, mm -hmm. um, and your output's force. Uh, could I, could I, you know, could I uh, record some other output instead? Could I record, say, RPM or Definitely. something like that? Yeah, yeah. Okay. You can be as flexible with it as you want. Just remember that whatever you uh, record in your data, that's what your model will Correct. be outputting okay. as well. Okay. okay. All right, so for system modification, we really just need the input and the output. Mm -hmm. So let's select those columns. Let's import them uh, each as a separate variable. Let's name them, what is it? It's our sign data. So let's name it uh, so that we can distinguish it from our mm -hmm. other one. Um, and let's exclude the first row. Mm -hmm. That's just a heading, and that's it. If we just click import, we get our data in the workspace. Okay, cool. Um, so let's just do the same with our square data. All right, so now you have uh, all of your data in your workspace, mm -hmm. and we can start with the system identification. Okay. So you can find the system identification app in the apps tab. Okay. Right here. All right, uh, so this is what it looks like. Mm -hmm. You see uh, the data views are where your data sets will be, and okay. it will just like show a brief preview of what your data looks like. Okay. And same for the models. Whatever models mm -hmm. you produce will show up here. Okay. Uh, we'll be using the pre-processing menu here. Mm -hmm. There are different kinds of pre-processing you can do to your data, and the estimate menu yep. here with all the different models you okay. can play around with. Okay. So let's go ahead and import our data. Mm -hmm. It's a time domain data. Correct. And but it, I see that it also gives you the option of, of having frequency domain data as well. Right, right. Yeah, yeah. So you can definitely um, use those as well. Okay. So what you need to do here is just input the names of your workspace mm -hmm. variables corresponding to input and output. Okay. So let's import our square data first. And this is just the name that it will show up with. So okay. let's square, and our starting time is zero. And you saw that our time, we were measuring um, our signal every two milliseconds. Okay. So that's yep. just what goes here. Yep. Uh, let's import. So you see it shows up there. Mm -hmm. And let's do the same for sign. All right. Perfect. So we have our data here. Mm -hmm. If you want to take a closer look at it, you can uh, always select it like this, and it goes bold, and um, click time plot. Okay. And it just shows you what your okay. Yeah, and, and, uh, and, and we can like. see that it's you know that there's a there's a square input wave on the bottom, and then the the, the response of the thruster. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. Um, so uh, if, if if I look at this data, you know, I I, I see that, that that it's sort of maintaining this, the same shape, but it's it's really noisy. Is there a, is there definitely. a way to deal with the noise? Yes, yes, uh, and that's probably would that would be the part of the preprocessing okay, data. Okay, okay, uh, okay. Depending on the data, there might be several pre -process, yeah, different yeah, preprocessing yeah. things that you yep, can do. Yep. Uh, let's just start with something very simple, okay. like removing the means. Mm -hmm. 
So we can drag and drop a data set here and um, click remove means here. And that will just drop our pre-processed data here. And we can see that all that removing means does is just centers your data okay. around okay. zero. Okay. That's all. All right, and let's do the same for our sign. All right, so we have now pre-processed two of our data sets. And let's just see what we get with this. Yeah. Okay, let's, yeah, let's just works. jump right in. Yep. So our square data will be using for estimation, and our sign data will be used for validation. Mm -hmm. And let's start with a simple state space model and see how that goes. Um, model order kind of corresponds to the complexity of your model. Okay. And a great thing with state space models is that you can um, let it uh, try a range of okay, complexities okay. and kind of okay. tell you which okay. one is the preferred one. Okay. So let's go with that. Mm -hmm. All right. So this plot shows you um, different uh, model orders okay. and see it recommends us to go with order eight. Okay. But you can kind of click around and and, and see which which one looks yeah, best. Yeah. Yeah. But let's go with eight. Let's just go with the default. Yeah. yeah okay. And see what what shows up. All right, so we see that uh, our the fit to estimation data is about 82 mm -hmm. percent, and let's see how well it performs on validation data. Okay. So we see that our new model showed up in the model views, uh -huh. and now if we click on model output, it will show us both the model data and the actual and the validation data. Yep. Okay. Yeah. So so, so we're getting about 77 percent, 78 percent. Yeah. Is, I mean, it's 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 not the best. It can definitely be. It can definitely, definitely better. be better. Um, but if we uh, zoom in and we see, so the blue is the model data. Uh, correct. And, and black is the. Yeah. Um, so it, it it looks like it, it definitely is maintaining the shape at least. Yeah. But it's uh, I I think I think part of it is just because there's so much noise in the data. That I agree. Get. Agree. Yeah. It definitely looks very noisy. Correct. It yeah. kind of gets the general behavior, yeah, but yeah. not quite. And 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 th th that's part of the reason why the the fits coming out to be so bad is because there are so many other right. data points yeah, in that, that, yeah. that yeah. it's not hitting Correct. every single Correct. Yeah, absolutely. Um, noise there all right so what we can do with that is we can try to get rid of some noise yeah which is, let's just go and filter some data right <laughs> seems reasonable <laughs> all right so what you can do is just go to filter here okay and you can either input the range directly mm -hmm. or you can just kind of select okay okay which is yeah and and and, and, f and something that, that that we know from and th this is where you know you you definitely need to know what kind of component you are you are modeling right is because we know that uh, if for for thrusters they usually have a have a low frequency range so anything that's 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 kind of high in the, in the frequency range we know that it's all noise so we can drop right. that out right yeah yeah okay, yeah. okay. So we can just click filter here and insert um, makes it show up here. Okay. So now we filtered our square data and let's do the same with the sign. Okay. Uh, nope. Filter. All right. With a similar range here. Filter and insert. So okay. now we have both our data sets yep. filtered. Okay, so let's go through the same process with using square as our working data and sign as a validation. Yep. And let's again try our state space models. Um, let's try different co yeah. complexity. Yep. Um, but you can also see that there is a bunch of other mm -hmm. um, options, yeah. options yep. to play with. For example, we can uh, prevent unstable models. Okay. Okay. Um, and and can can you talk a little bit? So so the, the, there are also different types of estimation methods, you know, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, each with each with, with with their own sort of complexities. Um, the uh, the subspace method is 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 a quicker method, mm -hmm. whereas you know the the prediction error minimization is something that it's, it's, a, a, it's a more iterative process. <laughs> yes. So again, you know, it's 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 something that, that that you guys have to play around with and, and figure out what what works best for you guys. Definitely. Yeah. Well, let's just go with quick subspace <laughs> and see what that does. Okay, so let's again go with default order eight. But um, for your data, you you'll have to see what works best. Yep. All right. All right. So we see that we are getting um, a better fit to yep. our estimation data, almost a hundred percent here. Yep. 
but let's see how it does on the validation data. Okay, so we'll just select this and click model output. All right, so we are getting around 99%, and we can see that it kind of um, fits yeah. better now. Yeah, yeah. And we also see how much smoother oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> our data is yeah. with, when filtered. All right, so that's already a pretty reasonable yeah. model. But I'll just, for fun, try a transfer function model as well. Okay. So here again, poles and zeros correspond mm -hmm. to how com complex you want your model to yep. be. Um, let's maybe go with 4 and 2. There are other options to play around with. Let's just go with this. And this go takes a little longer than just subspace mm -hmm. with state model. Um, yep, so that's like 93% with the estimation data. Yep. Let's compare it with what we already have here. Okay, so, so it's, it's similar. It's similar. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So those both are reasonable mm -hmm. models to use. Okay. Yeah. Well, th 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 this is this is this is good. You know, it's, it's at least at least a start, and I'm I'm sure teams will who are a little more uh, adventurous will, will will try different models, and hopefully, Definitely. you know, and, and you can you can get a fit a, a better fit. Um, Perfect. So uh, another thing that uh, that I wanted to ask you is, uh, now that we sort of developed this, you know, we've developed a transfer function model and a state space model. Um, is there a way that I could implement? You know, how how do I pull this data into MATLAB, or yeah. you know, or take it to Simulink? Because you know, uh, Simulink is somewhere that I want to simulate, uh, you know, design a controller or, right. or, or simulate the system. Yeah, yeah. so yeah. it's actually uh, fairly easy. You can just draw uh, drag your system here and drop it into the workspace. Okay. And it shows up right here. And okay. from the workspace, you can then um, use a Simulink block to okay, okay. pull it in Simulink. Okay, so perfect. On. So, so you, you you can see all the uh, all the math behind the uh, uh, behind the model there. Perfect. Yep. 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 Excellent. So, let's just do a quick review of what the process is for okay. system identification. Okay. Um, right. So we remember that the first step is always to collect data. Yep. And we actually have a video here of the uh, excellent robotics collecting the data. Yeah. Um, I, so I, I, I think it's something that uh, the reader can note is you, you want your data to be some sort of frequency switch. Um, you don't want this adaptive. You want uh, you want something like a side sweep or a jump sweep or a square wave. Um, and if you listen to the video, you can actually hear the hear the frequency uh, pop Exactly. Yeah. 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 Yep. So um, then, as we saw, you probably need to do some kind yep. of pre-processing. It mm -hmm. might depend on your data what exactly you might want to do. Correct. Correct. And, and, and pre-processing is really important because, especially you know, especially when you're when you're trying to measure data out of something like a thruster or a motor, uh, there's usually a lot of vibration, which yeah. you know, and you know, vibration always leads to noise. There's gonna uh, be some noise. Yeah. So, 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 so you, you you want to sort of clean out your data a little bit before you before you put it through the the system ID process. Right. No reason to try to model the noise. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and as we remember, we want to um, have a separate data set for validation and the other data set we want to actually plug in the system identification. Okay. Okay. All right, and then at the end of this process you hopefully get a model and then an important thing to do is to see how well that, how good that model is. Correct, okay. correct. Okay. So you, you always want to validate it against, uh, make sure you're not overfitting to a particular particular data set. Right, exactly, exactly. You want to see how well it generalizes. Correct. Okay. So you want to perform evaluation, you want to see how well your model data fit your validation mm -hmm. data. Mm -hmm. All right. So, but as we saw, probably it's a really trial and error. Correct. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, you might need to spend some time collecting your data. Correct. Maybe yeah. it will take a couple of takes mm -hmm. <laughs> to, yep. to do it perfectly. Yep. And pre-processing is also um, depends on your data. You Correct. might want to try and see yep. different methods and how it works out. Mm -hmm. And model structures, there are different ones to choose from. Yep. And you might try and see how different Correct. ones yep. and which one is the best for your data. And then for every model you produce, you want to see how um, how good it is, how good does it fit. Correct. Okay. Okay. So that's basically the process. Important things to remember 
when doing system identification is, as we underlined already, you really want to make sure your data is of good quality. Mm -hmm. Your model can only be as good as your data. Yep. When choosing model structures, you want to make sure to start simple, mm -hmm. and then in, you can increase the complexity later if needed, but yep. you don't want unnecessary complexity. Correct, correct, yep. Um, make sure to have a separate validation set mm -hmm. um, to make sure your model, <laughs> to make sure you're confident in your estimation of how good your yep. model is. Yep. Um, you will probably have to try different things and yeah. <laughs> repeat the yeah. process several Some sort times. of iteration, yep. Yep. And uh, you don't want to model the entire robot, you mm -hmm. want to focus on a smaller component first, and that's easier to get a better model of a smaller piece rather than the entire system. Okay. okay. But once you have that, though, you, you're free to integrate it into your larger model. Correct. Okay. And also, once you have the model, you can now design the controllers and test them out. Mm -hmm. And that's the launch port for your next next step. Okay. Well, perfect. Uh, thank you so much, Chris, for taking the time out to, uh, to talk to our audience. Before we wrap things up, uh, I, I just want to quickly point you guys to some uh, some Robotics Arena resources. You can get in touch with us at the Robotics Arena at MathWorks.com. Uh, we look forward to hearing from you because it, it's uh, uh, because feedback is good and and you know it it helps us it helps us put together better resources for you guys. Don't forget about our Facebook group. We've got uh, you know you've, you've got the MATLAB and Simulink Robotics Arena on Facebook. Um, it's a group where a lot of people sort of interact with each other and uh, you can ask questions and uh, you will definitely get some help over there. And then don't forget about the software offer. We offer complimentary software to student competition teams and, and you, you can you can find out more about that at the link on the screen. Thank you for taking the time to, to watch this video. Um, we hope to have you again.